Click on subscribe, click on the bell icon to get notifications from India's smartest channel, TRS Clips. So ma'am, the world of yoga keeps talking about how physical intimacy contains a lot of exchange of energies. And they say that couples who are together for really long start thinking in the same way, become kind of one person if it's healthy love. Or even if it's unhealthy love, I'm guessing they exchange negative traits. Does any of the books talk about this kind of concept of an exchange of energy and exchange of personality traits through sex? Yes. So it's a very common theme in all texts. I mean, particularly when you read books that discuss. So I must tell you that the Kama Sutra itself does not talk about the act of sex at all. It talks about positions, talks about the architecture of the positions, not about the act of sex, but there are other texts that do talk about sex. And yes, they do say that when you, even when you kiss somebody, okay, when you actually kiss somebody mouth to mouth um, for an extended period of time, you do exchange your energies. There is a transference of one energy to the other. I guess when you are that closely, think about it, even if you sit in a room with somebody for long enough, um, on one sofa, let's say, and just chat, if the other person is really like, you know, you will pick that up and you start to feel sleepy by the end of it. If the other person is really up there and, you know, buzzing and bouncing around, you will pick that up. So, yeah, definitely there is an exchange of energy. In ancient um, times, again, particularly in Tantra and in the ancient Chinese erotic texts, they talk about how to balance out this by um, certain techniques during sex. So that if you don't want to take the other person's energy on, or uh, in a lot of the cases, it was, it was said that, you know, you had um, the, the man would ejaculate into the woman. So the woman would get his energy, but he wouldn't get hers. And it was believed that a woman had a much higher level of energy. It was believed in ancient times that a woman has eight times the capacity for sexual arousal than a man does. And before we come to this whole patriarchal narrative of saying, oh my God, a woman is loose because she has eight times the, the amount of capacity to be aroused and hence she's very difficult to please. The idea of that was that if arousal is supposed to be the highest form of energy, she has eight times the level of being able to gather, harness that energy, okay? So it was believed that a man cannot get a woman's energy because she cannot ejaculate into him. So there are ancient techniques I don't know anybody who's actually practiced them, where the man, instead of ejaculating into the woman, could actually suck the woman's um, sexual fluids into himself and gather her energy. Yep, I don't. Yep. I don't know. Like I said, people say that they can do it. I'm not convinced that anybody can or can't unless they've practiced to do this for, I don't know, like decades and decades. But the interesting thing that they do talk about, and this is an easier one to, to deal with, is that the sitting position is the one that was considered the best, simply because then nobody is underneath or on top, which means that one is not giving the energy, the other one's not sucking it up. In the sitting position, you have an equal chance of getting each other's energies. But yes, they also said that when you have sex in the normal position, face to face, and you kiss at the same time, you then created a circuit. You know, you've, you completed the circuit and the energy could rotate in, within both people equally. Got it. Wow. Okay, this is a lot of depth to absorb in one conversation, but I'm still going to keep going.